I wanted to play with the architecture. The stories will just spread across wherever the container goes. I learned a lot, experiment a lot this time. This is the most complex artwork that I've uh, done till now. Uh, Indian mystical philosophies are reinterpreted uh, and perspectives are challenged. Uh, Two artists, a world apart, one Indian, the other Spanish, traverse the potential of a canvas. Join us as we take you into the stories of these two artists as they breathe soul into their surreal works in Delhi's Lodi colony and Tughlaqabad, this week on Color My City. Harshvardhan Kadam, hailing from a family of artists, is an eclectic visual artist who retells Indian mythological stories in public spaces through his project called Mythopolis. Since I'd seen Amar Chitragada happening in my house, in our studios, I was extremely close to mythology as a subject. So a lot of uh, that exposure, uh, that understanding sort of seeped in my lifestyle. Uh, because of that. So what I've tried to paint on this wall is basically certain aspects which are part of the whole universe which sorry, contribute to everything that can be called as existence. Things that we know, things that we don't know, things that I've seen, experienced, things which I haven't experienced. chooses to tell a story through a large, imposing, and equally fascinating artwork that depicts the Virat Roop of Hindu deity Lord Vishnu. Before the 18-day battle of Mahabharat, which was a battle between Pandavas and Kauravas, Arjun, one of the Pandavas, had a few questions. He was anxious about the whole battle. His charioteer was Krishna, and he was anxious, and he started asking questions to Krishna. In the entire conversation bet between Arjuna and Krishna, Krishna manifested it is Vishwarupa, the universal form of uh, of Lord Vishnu, uh, which consists of everything that is animate, inanimate, uh, in the entire universe. The entire artwork consists of these faces, which are from various periods, various time zones. Some are uh, fictitious. Some of them are popularly known avatars of Vishnu like Matsya Avatar or Vara Avatar. So it's an exercise for uh, people who are walking to spend some time, look and understand what I'm trying to, uh, I've tried to paint over here. By flooding the canvas with intricacies, Harsh interprets these stories, but breaks away from popular depictions of Hindu mythology. Everything that is microcosmos and the microcosmos is, it's all within. And that's what even this artwork tries to sort of pinpoint on because there are elements which are really tiny, which people won't be able to understand or observe or find. But while making the artwork, I try to make sure that those, uh, that idea is also uh, being told in this. And the environment is primed for engagement from visitors and from passers-by. We're changing the face. Thank you so much. Thank you. I've left uh, the entire ground empty, which basically is like passerbys who will be passing. We are always in certain kind of a situation, very similar to how Arjun was in, uh, in a situation. So as you're passing by, you are part of the same situation that I'm trying to paint over here. So, uh, like, we have conflicts, we have anxieties, we have issues, we have happiness, we have... We are trying to understand uh, life each and every day. And this was exactly the same thing which happened uh, in Mahabharata. To, uh, to even do justice to the thought is beyond human. And in a small way, I've tried to get in a sense of that experience, that literature, those words in this piece. 
one of my favorite pieces at Lodi, the Vishwarupa, the, the whole mural, is I think uh, one of the best pieces of his life. The kind of detailing which he has done it and uh, it's, it's, it's quite nice expression of an, of an Indian art and I think he's one of the artists who's improved significantly uh, high during this festival. So he's been, he's been really the, I know, the ideal choice as well as like, uh, I think he's, he's done a great job. Harsh finds working on an exterior wall more satiating than painting in a studio. This is the most complex artwork that I've uh, done till now. It took about eight days to make this artwork. Hey, every time I finish a piece, I feel so empty that I just want to fill that space with another piece. I enjoy making it more than the final result. So the process is something that uh, is something which I take back with me. मैंने ये स्टार्ट से देखा जब से स्क्रैपिंग किया आउटलाइन जब बनाया उस टाइम तक कुछ नहीं समझ आया आउटलाइन बन गया तब भी 10 परसेंट पता लगा और जो उसके बाद में इन्होंने जो मेहनत किया दैट वॉज अमेजिंग अपने रूम में बेडरूम में बैठ के और सोफा पे बैठ के जब ये देखा इट्स लुक लाइक अवन ले आई थिंक इट्स सोट ऑफ जस्ट अपोज ऑफ चाइनीज फोक लॉर एंड सोट ऑफ इंडियन माइथोलॉजिकल कैरेक्टर्स अमंग्स मैनी विच आई डू नॉट नो आर्ट तो हमेशा सूदिंग होता ही है आप सुबह उठ के देखें या शाम को देखें किसी भी टाइम आप थके आ रहे हों और आप आर्ट अगर देखेंगे अप्रीशिएट करने वाला होना चाहिए बस आदमी अच्छा ही लगता है उसके बाद तो हमें तो हम जैसे हम सुबह उठते हैं इट्स इट्स नाइस फीलिंग लुकिंग एट इट Rondo has a rock star vibe. The first time I met him, he was wearing a snake belt, leather boots, leather jacket, and you know, you can like really connect with him. Like, boom, that's a person. While Harsh finishes rendering the Vishwarup at Lodi, Spanish artist Gonzalo Porondo creates imagery that contrasts subject with space. Borondo finds inspiration in the Indian architectural masterpiece of Mysore Palace, painting a palace next to a junkyard. It was because of the environment. I want them to bring it, to play with the contrast between social levels and different realities. So bringing uh, here to this pure environment, something royal, uh, something that the people who live here will never see probably. So I wanted to, to play with the architecture, creating as well a, an abstraction from this frontal point that is the, the throne, the golden throne. And after slowly, slowly playing more with the surface and just with colors, putting all the attention in the center of the piece. As well, I, the idea was to put uh, three animals, the pigeon, the cow and the dog probably because of the here they are for me like the real homeless that they are always around looking for love and food and uh, bringing them inside of this I started to work with Borondo um, back in Italy uh, five years ago and uh, it was like always one of my favorite artists I can't uh, I can't lie uh, and obviously this opinion was shared like by all the uh, members of the team and we were like really really keen of adding him on board and finally we got it um, and, and nothing and basically like he started to work like with architecture really recently because before he was painting like mainly human figures if you see like each one of the uh, brush strokes is really abstract, so you have to step really further to understand uh, what the old piece is all about. The mural, called Mirage, plays with the contrast between this regal subject and the uneven surface of the container on which he paints. Uh, the fact that I am mostly a painter, 
or that I work with image, it's because uh, I'm better with image than with, than with words. So that's why I, 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 I use the image. And this has always been the case. As a young boy in Segovia, Spain, Gonzalo Borondo loved to experiment with graffiti techniques. He quickly learned that the best gallery for him is the street. I started in the streets when I was 12 years old, something like that. I felt always more comfortable in the public spaces and playing with the different surfaces. So yeah, it was something really natural. Personally, I didn't keep myself uh, stop in one thing. I, I always try to develop it more and more and take risks. His work is poetic and evocative, inviting the viewer to challenge conventional wisdom. Your eyes are busy with many information that we don't really need, so my, let's say, my mission it was to bring another kind of uh, language, talking about this poetry that we missed. With images, you can, you can bring that poetry in another way. In every project, I try to develop a different idea. Uh, I try to enter in contact with the space, with the surrounding, with the people, and after taking things from that and bringing to the surface that I choose or the organization depends. I mean, it's quite difficult, but there is not one thing that I want to express in all of my work. Things that for me are a bit poetical, probably no one understand it or just few people. Inside there is like his installation which is like made by bricks, uh, which he painted in gold. So the bricks are displayed in the super common visual uh, that you can see all around Indian cities, uh, but they are painted in gold. And this is like a sort of a way to say this richness actually is not belonging to wealthy people, it's belonging to the people who are making this country alive and so vibrant. So to the workers, to the people who are actually working every day here, like, you know, hurting their backs and not having any access to this kind of mirage. He's doing a reflection about the beauty and the richness and the magnificence that we can find in India, but also on the contrary. Uh, the other point, no, those two Indias and the duality that we can find always. It's different, right? He's not clean up, he's just used the brokenness of the container and like, embraced that. It's pretty interesting because it looks like a painting sort of found itself on a container. That little fort, the little Jodhpur effect. It's, it's the India we see every day, but not in this form. The palace will come down. Its parts will scatter. After all, this palace wasn't real. It's just, as Borondo envisioned, a mirage. Continuing with the theme of mythology, Harsh centers the female form in his work at ICD in a piece called Matrika. Matrika aims to represent the feminine half in Hindu mythology, which is often absent from popular iconography. This painting that I'm making right now is also about uh, the trinity of, of Indian mythology. It's Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva but not representing them in uh, the way they are represented, but in uh, the female version of the Trinity. So it's Brahmini, Vaishnavi and Shakti together. I thought telling the story of uh, these three divinities was uh, something interesting. So it fits the context. And uh, not a lot of people know about uh, Brahmini, Vaishnavi and Shakti. So I thought the stories will just spread across wherever the container goes. <laughs> 
book also pulls from the deepest trenches of Hindu scripture and makes the creatures from legends loom large. The animal below Shakti is called a Yali. Yali is a hybrid of various animals. I've used the vehicles of these three deities. So it's, you see a fusion of bull, uh, the snake, the sheshnag of, this, uh, of Vishnu as a tail of this animal and the, feather, the wings are of uh, Brahma's vehicle. The animal is actually taking a pose of anticipation of going somewhere else and uh, that's how I came up with the pose and distributed the entire composition over these spaces. Illustrations of the past and designs of the future often commune in Harsh's narrative. And the composition is riddled with even more stories for the viewer to decipher after the piece comes apart. At the same time, I've used a bit of futuristic uh, design elements to make it look like a, uh, like a spaceship, like something that, like a Viman. Essentially, they use it to travel across time and space. The containers are going to do the same. They are going to move out of Delhi into some ship, to some other coordinate, to some other continent, or wherever it has to go. So, contextually, in that space, this thought really worked. So, every container is every deity. These industrial boxes are rendered alive by the icons etched onto their surfaces. These boxes are totally, totally dry, without a character, without any kind of emotion. And with a bit of uh, expressions around, with a bit of uh, colors, um, the vibe of the space is completely changed and gone to something else. Uh, from something as dry as uh, a dead box, it has just become like life stories, stories which people and, uh, are coming and looking at and trying to understand what everybody has been making. The gold lady, sort of like a peg, not a pegasus, like a tiger sort of thing. So there's one over here, so that's one of my favorite pieces. Um, I don't know, it, it sort of stirs something in me, just like the gold, um, the gold lady. My favorite is the big, big animal. Why do you like it? Because it's big and it tastes like a snake. Borondo surveys Lodi Colony to find the perfect wall for his piece, and he finds inspiration in the place where all lives begin. Actually, I chose this wall because there was no other walls in front of me. I wanted just the piece to be alone, so there was this wall in front of this maternity hospital. And I wanted to create this perspective to give more deepness to the wall and play with this, this, the things that are going in and the things that go out. So the tree, this perspective who entered inside. And after I think about the idea of the maternity, so the idea it was like, like the, um, before the life, like talking about the cycle of the life, you know, something's going out, something going, coming here, you don't know really where you are. Borondo finds imperfections of the wall stimulated, and he blends its flaws seamlessly into his composition. I started thinking about how to use the architecture because for me it's very important to use what is there already, not just use it as a canvas. I didn't really want to create it so precise, so realistic. I prefer it more rough and mixing many languages together, something more naive, something more graphic, something more painting, more realistic, and try to find a compromise between them. That's that's, that's something that I, I like in painting, so that's what I try to do. And as well to use the surface, the colors that they were already there, the, the, the broken parts, the windows. Borondo's piece, titled The Origin of the World, not only finds poetry in perspective, but draws heavily from the culture he places his work in. I like this idea of the river, that's why I put the boat. I think it's something 
a really beautiful concept and actually something like very Indian, this um, relationship with the river, like part of the life. Uh, so I wanted to, to use this, this idea of this river who is entering in, the no, in a no place and this figure who is this anonymous is going into this bloody river that could be, you know, the birth. And this openness leads to different meanings and interpretations. I prefer to keep it open, but yeah, that was the main idea. And after I start playing with many things, small elements, small symbols that not everyone can see, but for me they're important, make, make the painting more, more rich. Not only just one thing, just many things talking together in a kind of dialogue between them. ना गजब लग रहा देखने में आज मैं ऐसा लग रहा कि कहीं है ना बिल्डिंगों के बीच में जाके खड़े हो गए हम लोग बड़ा अच्छा लगा भाई बहुत बढ़िया है एकदम जिसने भी बनाया है गजब बना बहुत बहुत बढ़िया है आप देखिए पूरा पूरा समझ में आ जाएगा कि एक्चुअली क्या कोशिश करी गई है बनाने की लाइक इन एली वॉकिंग एंड मे बी सो द रीजन प्रोबेबली दिस एनिमल फ्रेंड ऑफ दिस it's just a cheerful thing to look at so what you go out and you think oh home this chapter next story i learn a lot I experiment a lot this time with all of these architectures that is something that is new for me and i had fun next one will be better